can't fake this. And that's why I think actually in the Western media, the claims that the statistics are fake have stopped. It had two months warning. What, what is all this nonsense that there's no personal protective equipment? Well, let's deal with the question, are they ready to open the economy? The answer is no. Well, if you've got, you know, average of one death per day, for example, or, or China, zero deaths per day, then you can open uh, the economy gradually. But the idea that you open the economy when there are 5,000 cases a day and where there are six or 700 deaths a day is absolutely crazy. It also means that you can't do the mechanism, the things which are necessary to bring the virus under control. It is absolutely crazy. I calculate, the first thing I do when I get up every morning is I look at the World Health Organization reports. Look, if you look at the situation of just countries in the last period, let's take the last seven days. What is the number of deaths per capita? Per, that's per million people. Because it's obviously ridiculous to compare, you know, a country like Belgium, which has, you know, a small, very small population, China or Russia or something. So if you take it per capita and take the last seven days, the UK has seven deaths per, per million person, that average. The Sweden has 6.6. .6. The US has 5.5. .5. So if you look at that, in China in the last seven days, there are zero deaths. In South Korea, there are 0 0.02 deaths. This is per million. In Australia, there are 0 0.04 deaths. In Japan, there are 0.2 deaths per minute. This means that the death rates in the Western economies are running at uh, 50 times the death rates in Asia. So this idea that the economy, that things can open now from the point of view of health is completely irresponsible, very dangerous. It's also going to divide the world into two. You're going to have a region in Asia and the Pacific whereby you have, uh, let's call it clean, not, not disease, it's small, very small number of cases that can be controlled, right? And this will take in most of, most of Asia, so certainly most of the Pacific part of Asia, Australia, New Zealand. Then you're gonna have what we, a disease-ridden area centered in the United States and possibly in parts of Western Europe as well, like Spain and Italy. What does this mean? This means that every aeroplane that arrives from the United States is a deadly threat. It's, it's not, uh, it's, this is not, you're not metaphorically, you're not in rhetoric facing a deadly threat, you're facing a literal de deadly threat. But how are you, this is going to be intolerable. This means that the internal policies which are pursued by the United States of letting the virus rip threaten the whole of the rest of the world. Then let me deal with the economic question. It's wrong suppose it as a balance between the pandemic and the economy. China is able to reopen its economy because it has basically suppressed the virus. Okay, it's not back to, to absolute normal. It's not 100% of the number of people, but it's, let's say, 60%, something like that. I noticed there were traffic jams the other day in Beijing, right? Okay. Slightly strange where a sign of health is that you have traffic jams. But nevertheless, it, it is, right? You can't fake this. If China's data statistics were not basically correct, thousands of people would die every day. You can't, no, no, every country could conceal. There are really 20 cases and they claim the 10. Nobody would be able to find out, right? Okay. But you can't conceal thousands of people for dying. And that's why I think actually in the Western media, the claims that the statistics are fake have stopped. American billionaires wanted to. Murdoch, for example, also media carrying out a huge campaign to try to get the US open. That, the Murdoch press, there's a very good article by Kevin Rudd, the former Prime Minister of Australia, who says that this attempt to claim that the virus uh, originated in a laboratory in Wuhan is being systematically spread by the Murdoch press. It's a rather long article and he goes through it in, in rather great de de detail. Why? Because they've got to divert attention from the disaster which is happening in the United States. You, you should understand the United States has had a very protected history because of its geographic, you know, it's protected on one side by the Atlantic Ocean and protected on the other side by the Pacific Ocean. Right? Mm -hmm. It's only had 
previously two experiences of mass deaths on its own soil in the whole history of the United States. Uh, the first was uh, during the Civil War, and the second was during the Spanish flu pandemic. Apart from that, the United, the United States has had a number of occasions on which its foreign troops have suffered large casualties. They did, they did in World War II, they did in the Korean War, uh, they did in the Vietnam War. But a, a mass death experience on the United States, this is very rare, very, very rare. So only twice before in its history. Therefore, this will have a tremendous traumatic effect um, on the situation in the United States. It is therefore vital for the Trump administration to try to divert attention onto something else. Because if it was known that it, it had created this disaster, and it did, it had two months warning. What, what is all this nonsense that there's no personal protective equipment? The, uh, the, what is all this nonsense that there is no testing equipment? The United States is the second greatest manufacturing power in the world after China. If it had launched uh, programs to create um, uh, personal protection equipment and testing equipment and ventilators and other things like that, when it could have done, which would have been in January, you wouldn't have had this number of deaths. So therefore, it's vital to try to divert attention away from that, from this. And then the reason that the people want the things going go is uh, they want to make money. Elon Musk, for example, issued this tweet saying, set, set America free because you want to make money. They're, it's a cynical thing. They're prepared to allow thousands of people to die, or not maybe thousands, tens of thousands of people to die because they want to make money. It's as simple as that. An opinion poll found that 10% of the American population supported these people going out, etc., uh, who are protesting. And 12% of the population in America believe that vampires really exist. So, so less people support these people than have van the, the believe in the existence of vampires. So let's be clear. Actually, their, their support is tiny. What, what is their danger for two reasons? One is because, of course, Trump has tried to support them, and sections of the American media have supported them. The American population doesn't support them. Yes, I think this is negative. The, the most serious of these was the situation in Italy. Because it's, Italy was held hit several weeks before other countries in Europe, Italy made very urgent appeals for help. Um, and uh, it didn't get it. It didn't get, uh, didn't get personal protection equipment. I mean, not, not significant numbers. I mean, there were some gestures, but nothing that would enable you to control the situation. It didn't get financial support. Um, and I know that Italy feels very... Um, betrayed, we may say, that this is one of the reasons why there's been a sharp shift in public opinion in uh, Italy towards um, China. For example, a, a recent opinion poll said, which country do you consider it most important to have relations with in the future? And 30% said the United States and 36% said China. Also, Russia aided um, Italy, flew not as much as China, because Russia doesn't have the, doesn't have the manufacturing capacity. That China has. Yeah, so a number of countries felt very um, let, let down. This is going to have a negative effect on the solidity of the EU. Also, the country, there was no uniform strategy which is involved on the lockdown. I say some countries were very successful. Slovak Republic is the most um, extreme case, very, very low number of deaths, but also, also some other places. And uh, whereas in Western Europe, you have a disaster. So I think this is going to undermine the homogeneity of the uh, European Union. But again, we don't know how it's going to end because we're not near the end of the crisis.